Hi, welcome to this presentation. Don't be desperate for a lawyer. If you are in a custody battle with a narcissist, if you are in uh, your co-parenting with a narcissist or dealing with a narcissist, I have some survivor wisdom to share with you today. Only use your lawyer for law, not the drama or as a therapist. Hi, I'm a mom who's been through this. My name is Grace Wilson. I'm an author and strategy coach for moms. And many of us have been in this position and made this mistake. So I'm here to uh, share with you some of my free blogs and books and videos to help you navigate the narcissist better. If you're in a custody battle with the narcissist, this is very challenging and it's important that you think about these things ahead of time. As women and moms, we can't allow ourselves to be or become desperate for two major things. Number one, love, and number two, lawyers. Being needy, confused, and overwhelmed, and full of grief and pain can cause us to reach for anyone who will lend a listening ear and help. Narcissists love to prey on desperate people. As mothers or women who were desperate for love and attention, we may have inadvertently attracted a narcissist. The same is true for hiring a lawyer. We have to watch out for making desperate emotional decisions when it comes to hiring a lawyer and going to family court. I am here to share with you some of my survivor wisdom. The disclaimer will be at the end. Why do we not want to be desperate? Because people, even professionals, who could also be narcissists, can smell desperation like a shark can smell blood. When we aren't clear on our motives, when we don't know what we want from the courts or the judge, when we come loaded with unhealed pain and unresolved guilt to meetings with tons of grief, we spend money to the tune of thousands of dollars. In desperation and pain, we aren't focused enough to see through the cloud of conflicting emotions, and neither is the lawyer. Lucky and unlucky with lawyers? It's not just luck, it's planning and pre-planning too. If the lawyer is ethical, you will be lucky. If the lawyer just needs a high conflict, high paying client, you could, up, could end up spending all of your savings, going into debt, and ruining yourself financially. So be warned. This has happened to many a desperate mother trying to save her child from the abuse of a narcissist, alcoholic, sociopath, and or drug addict. And it's understandable why there's such a huge reaction to do something, anything, to try to save our children or win them back. But that's the problem. It's a reaction. It's not a clear, calm strategy with patience and insight. It's a trauma-filled, fear-based reaction to hire an attorney who says what we want to hear at the time, that he or she will fight, 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 or file motions for you that go or may go nowhere. Are you wasting money on lawyers? If you're spinning your wheels in family court and getting nothing accomplished for your children, it may be time to stop. It may be time to educate yourself on narcissists and court battles with a narcissistic abuse expert. You can get an entirely free YouTube education on narcissism or read all four of my books on Amazon to see what you're up against. It also may be time to get real with yourself. For example, accept defeat in certain areas, recognize your mistakes, hire a coach, make a strategy, take a break from court, Spend time healing. Just focus on being a good mom or go to some parenting classes that are not court ordered, etc. There are hundreds of productive things you can be doing with the thousands of dollars you might be throwing at a lawyer and throwing away. There could be another way to get more time with your child that doesn't involve a legal battle, but you will need to get out of stress and into creative thinking mode to see those creative solutions. What about self-care? Are you doing any of that? When we are unhealed and approach a lawyer, 
I used to call my second lawyer with every injustice and problem. This became costly as lawyers make an hourly wage that was more than I made in a week. I had to find another way to deal with the drama and not bring this to my lawyer who would get easily sidetracked. I had no idea that any form of disrespect by the narcissist caused me to strongly react. Now that I was broken up with him and claimed my own self-respect, when I was unhealed and approached my lawyer, I often sounded like part of the drama rather than reporting a new issue. In the healing programs that I attended, we look at ourselves as a step and try to see our patterns and blind spots. It's a difficult line to walk mentally between taking responsibility for our choices and not blaming or shaming ourselves. We have to own up to our stuff in those healing programs to heal. Even though the narcissist may have caused the trauma and abuse, like narcissistic abuse syndrome, it's our responsibility to heal from this. It may require a Herculean effort. It's no easy thing to lose custody or money to our abuser. It's hard to watch them get away with things and pathologically lie. Watching them dupe others and create flying monkeys and minions is infuriating. It's even more difficult to stand up to them in person or in, co in court. It takes courage through connection, solid healing and recovery, and strength that is sometimes borrowed from others. You can pick up my newest book, How to Survive a Custody Battle with a Narcissist, when the family courts force you to co-parent, for my tips, tools, and survivor strategies. Watch out for burnout. The fact is, we burn out. We are human. Also, our lawyers burn out from high conflict cases and become tone deaf to the drama we call them about. A better approach is to plan, prepare, and strategize. A better approach is to document the drama and label it in categories because organizing the disorder is one effective way to expose it. You have to show a pattern of behavior. Sometimes you need to sit down with someone and strategize how to handle your lawyer and what to use them for exactly. You may need a personal strategy and plan before you meet with your lawyer and develop a legal strategy in family court. I always recommend that moms first write down a list of 20 things they want to ask the courts and judge for. This list is important for the lawyer to focus on. If you don't know what you want, then you, then why are you going to court and filing motions? It's important that when we bring the courts and the judge a problem, we also bring them some solid solutions and our requests. The book I mentioned actually has legal strategies name that I have had to use over the years. Yes, I had to be flexible, adapt, and change this entire process of parallel parenting with a narcissist and co-parenting in a high conflict, costly custody battle. Stop yourself from self-sabotaging behaviors. If you can't, get help. To avoid burnout, wasting time, and wasting money, you may need to stop yourself from reacting legally. You may want to ask your lawyer to postpone things, stop filing, delay motions, you may want to do some legal consultations with other lawyers about your case. Only bring them the list of what you want, facts, evidence, and use them as a lawyer and not a therapist there to validate you. Sometimes, no matter who your lawyer is, no matter how good they are, the narcissist tactics, money, and tricks are successful. This is why we have to plan for short term and the long term. We can't use up our entire savings from the first year of our child's life. The fact of the matter is parents get rights. Even bad, neglectful, abusive parents get rights. Think about this. That's 18 years of parenting rights and protection that we will be attempting. And even the best lawyer can't fix the narcissist. Also, even the most competent, high-powered attorney can't fix a broken, incompetent family court system.
that's unable to detect and punish an abusive non-compliant parent in most cases. So it may mean that we have to accept unacceptable conditions so to not keep ourselves in high levels of stress and then financially sabotage ourselves on lawyers. This is a journal entry. Just like I don't want to anger and annoy the judge by filing motion after motion, I don't want to appear unstable by hiring and firing attorney after attorney. If you see yourself sabotaging yourself financially with lawyers, legal fees, and court filings, it's time to get serious help. As protective moms, we have to be smart, stable, healed, whole, and sane. We can't go insane dealing with insane personality disordered people, such as narcissists and corrupt professionals and lawyers or incompetent, ignorant judges. We must maintain our sanity and security. This keeps us in our child's life. We have to practice self-preservation to be there for our kids. Restore yourself to common sense and logic before taking action. Sometimes we have to be restored to common sense and logic. We aren't always reasonable or rational when it comes to our children. We want to protect them 100% from everything. We want full, full, soul, and primary custody. We want all decision making. We want to avoid all the problems and not be controlled by the narcissist. We want peace and our power back. Unfortunately, we can't always have it all. The good news is neither can the narcissist typically. The majority of us moms have had to share, suffer injustice, deal with constant unfairness, and watch our children suffer narcissistic abuse and neglect. It's a reality. Our view is often not the court's view. The court's view is our child has two parents, and without one, they're at a disadvantage. And they deserve the love, time, resources, and attention of both parents. What happens if a parent dies or goes into the hospital? That's something to think about. I had to use all my non-parenting time for healing. Recovery, research, and education on narcissism. The thing is, they don't want the child to become a ward of the state and cost the state money. When there are two adults showing up in court, claiming responsibility, and both are the child's parents. Sometimes it's important to see from the court's perspective to not take this whole ordeal personally. How do you not be desperate when it comes to your precious children or child? Well, it's one thing to feel desperate and triggered. It's another thing to act on it. When we go to buy something, we explore our options. We shop around. It is not wise to take the first lawyer we talk to, in most cases. That's why my Get the Light Right Lawyer Guide has three of my 20 worksheet, 20 question worksheets to interview potential attorneys. You can print them. I instruct moms to fill them out ahead of time, look at the questions, keep it simple, and ask what to document to win the case. It's usually what matters most to your court, your judge. This means you prep. This means you interview. This means you talk to three to five lawyers first before making a decision. It means you sleep on the decision and look at your notes from the worksheets you filled out. This means you put in the time and effort to it takes to get the right lawyer for your budget, case, and conscience. Redefine your goals. Don't focus on winning, validation, or approval from the courts. Also, we can't be desperate to quote-unquote win. We have to redefine what winning means in a child custody case. If we are so focused on not losing and winning, we may lose sight of what's most important. Often the narcissist is all about winning. They go for the quick and dirty win. They constantly go back to court to win some more if they previously won. The goals can't be about winning. Our goals. In my view, 
only the lawyers win as they get paid whether it's a favorable judgment for us or not. We need to focus on getting what our child needs to survive and thrive. That has to be the bar and the standard we set instead of winning. We have to mature beyond a win-lose mentality. Adults learn how to lose gracefully and learn the lesson to not repeat it. As adults, we also learn not to tie our self-esteem to a court ruling. Journal. Take time to write down what you're learning. What lesson have you recently learned? So how do you not be desperate? You heal. You find the healing programs, you do them. You repeat them if need be. You try other healing programs for loss, grief, and guilt. And commit yourself to learning, healing, and growing. You get support, more than just a lawyer. You find therapists, coaches, counselors, specialists, support groups, and you attend them regularly and do something daily to support your recovery from loss and the narcissist. You find safe people to vent to regularly to purge your pain. If needed, you wrap yourself up in a cocoon of self-love and safety and get away from other toxic people and situations that could be bogging you down, making it worse. You take full responsibility and launch your own self-help program because self-work is the most important work you will ever do. I had to use all of my non-parenting time for healing, recovery, research, and education on narcissism. I had to strengthen my self-esteem, which was shattered. I also had to talk with others who endured, endured this and got through it to get courage through connection. I had to appear in court multiple times, go through lengthy trials, many investigations, two psych avails, lots of CPS claims, and seven months of abusive co-parenting therapy with my awful narcissistic ex by phone. I had to lose my rights, get a new lawyer, win them back. Let's just say the stress, agony, and anguish were more than I could bear at times, and even turned I turned to churches and spirituality to make it through the battles that I wasn't mentally and emotionally equipped for. The wisdom I gained, I now pass on to other struggling and suffering moms. I can acknowledge and say that there were traps in my case. I can admit my mistakes in thinking. I can own up to the problems I caused and the drama I stepped into just trying to have peace when in court or vent my pain. After learning painful lessons, there are so many things that I do not do anymore. I stop myself. This includes stopping myself from thinking thoughts that lead to rage and fear. I stop myself from getting even close to the edge of the pit of self-pity. I have had to get a hold of my attitude and make myself write gratitude lists daily when I was so negative and beaten down by life in the court battle. Sometimes I had to take myself on long walks and talk to myself as, as if I was talking to my best friend and helping her go through it. The point is, I did get through it. Even more so, I didn't just go through it, I grew through it. I went on to write and self-publish six books on Amazon about my courageous journey and transformation. It was a dilemma. I highly encourage you to journal your thoughts, feelings, pain, and fear. And most importantly, list your gratitudes because gratitude is a solution. When I focused on all that I had, all the favor on my life, all my advantages, all my blessings, I felt better. I felt well enough to keep going and be the best mom I could be, healed with a positive mindset. I had to see that I had a happy, healthy child and the narcissistic abuse stopped with me. She wasn't being raised in an alcoholic pendant, codependent home. I stopped my codependent ways. I had acquired, actually built, enough self-esteem to hire an attorney. I had learned enough about narcissists so not to create expectations that led to more resentments. I had to remember who he was and not project my nice self onto him. I became savvy enough to be able to name the tactic used on me and counter most of them. I watched myself become immune from narcissistic abuse, healed from it, and saw my child be buffered and protected from much of it. I saw how Therapy with narcissist experts helped validate my reality and my child's feelings and thoughts and experiences. 
The whole experience bonded us together and strengthened us. We came out stronger than before. You can too. My last and final tips, commit to keeping a daily gratitude journal. Be mindful. Use caution to only use your lawyer for law and not as a therapist or someone to deal with ongoing drama. Document that instead. Bring it on organized, orderly, and non-emotionally to the lawyer to see if they can do something about it. If you see a court battle brewing, don't wait till the last minute to do attorney consultations and interviews. It's better to take your time with this hiring process to try to find a good fit for you in your case. The recap of my 11 tips, take your time, pause, think about your case from a higher perspective, step back and observe. Mentally get out of the war zone to act, assess the fight and the fighting. Stop focusing on winning in family court, establish clear motives, make a declaration. Get stable and sane before taking action. Interview several potential attorneys before retaining one. Don't rely on a lawyer for mental health therapy or to deal with the drama. Don't tie your self-esteem as a mom to a court ruling. Get an education on narcissists and family court to be prepared. Knowledge is power. Do a healing recovery program. Find a team of safe support people. Be smart, logical, sane, and reasoning out. Reason it out with someone before taking any action to make sure it's not a scattered reaction. Don't assume the lawyer knows what you want. Write your list, present that, and let the list lead the way. The list of what you want. Because you matter. About me, I'm Grace. I was in a 12 year custody battle. I've had three attorneys. Initially I saw attorneys who could help me for free because I was financially disadvantaged with a special needs child. It was hard to ask for help, being proud, capable and competent, but I didn't know the law. However, I did know myself. I was way too emotional about having a child with an alcoholic narcissist to represent myself. I was full of shame, blame, regret and guilt. I would burst into tears and sobs just talking about my case. I'd become angry so that I couldn't think straight. It took seven years of Al-Anon, ACOA, CODA, those 12-step meetings, plus therapy, DV counseling, a program sponsor, life coaches, and more to stop beating myself up over my mistake and error in thinking that I could protect her from him. This was a long time to get over my anger with myself and to start moving on past this. It was a rude awakening when the judge, in my case, the first judge granted my ex the chronically drinking, arrogant narcissist unsupervised visitation with my baby. I had to learn to say our baby and share with someone I hated, detested, and want nothing to do with. After doing the pregnancy alone and finding out I was pregnant after our breakup, I was depressed and devastated. By him having access and, and time? I wanted to protect her at all costs. It wasn't that he refused to help when I found out I was pregnant and sick on bed rest and left me destitute. It wasn't that he cheated on me. It wasn't that he immediately started a relationship with a new girl while I was carrying his child around in my belly. It was that I didn't want my child in a drunk driver's seat or car or truck. Guess what? That's exactly what the courts ordered and dismissed my concerns. The guilt I suffered for bringing an innocent child into a known mess was horrible. The time away from my baby was loaded with fear and I had to force myself to go to Al-Anon 12-step meetings just to keep my mind off the tragedy and from projecting worst case scenarios and outcomes. I had to use all my parenting time for healing, uh, non-parenting time for healing, recovery, research, and education on narcissism. I encourage you to do similar self-work. Again, self-work is the most important work we may ever do. So my helpful books for dealing with a narcissist, I write for moms so they don't have to feel so alone, can be validated in what they're experiencing, and improve their co-parenting conditions with a narcissist. Learn all you can. Be prepared with survivor wisdom. 
My first book in this series is the Orange Yellow Book, Co-Parenting with a Narcissist, Seven Self-Rules to Stay Sane. My second book is How to Fight a Narcissist in Family Court and Win. My third is Co-Parenting with a Sociopath, Survival and Sanity Guide. And my fourth book, which you saw, is How to Survive a Custody Battle with a Narcissist when the family courts force you to co-parent. You can find them on Amazon, some or most on Audible. This is my disclaimer. These are helpful tips based solely on my thoughts and opinions. I'm not a qualified mental health professor, professional nor a crisis case worker. I cannot give legal advice or appropriate counsel and therefore not liable for any injury or harm in your case or to you or your child. Please follow your doctors, therapists, counselors, and lawyers' advice, as well as your own good common sense and intuition based on your unique case to see if my tips could be helpful for you. Child custody situations may vary, whereas some of these will not be applicable in your circumstance. Furthermore, court orders may dictate otherwise. Please use your own good judgment when reading this as a blog, PDF, or viewing this as a video. This is for personal self-help only. These were created from my own lived experience and not based on any laws or rules of the courts. It's copyright protected by me not to be sold, distributed, quoted without my consent. These are three books in the series. Uh, I always say start with the first one. If you are ready to learn, I am ready to teach. Be teachable. Don't think you know it all. I still don't know it all. <laughs> the more I find out, the, the more questions I have. Then go to number two. You could even skip number three and head to the fourth book. I have a three-part strategy for co-parenting and custody battles in my fourth book, which is the gray book with the rock tower on it. The, in that book are the legal strategies that I used. There's 20 of them, and you can find them on my blog and buy this as a single video or get them in my last book, The Gray One with the Rocks. <clears throat> I like to give moms in my Facebook group a heads up that the nonsense never ends with a narcissist and learn not to expect order from a disordered person. And I share my survivor wisdom that my healing was a psychological buffer for my child when dealing with a narcissist. I encourage you to heal, become sound and healthy again. If you've fallen apart, you can pick yourself up, put yourself back together, and put yourself back together strong. I give a lot of words of wisdom to don't let his disorder make you the disordered and disorganized parent. Get organized, which means you have to take your time. That's the first book available on Amazon, also available on Audible. I have a Navigate the Narcissist 11 video course. If you like this common sense wisdom, this talk it to you straight, it's better to hear from me than from a judge. <laughs> uh, just to know that some of this is uh, happening in the family courts. You can get solutions for sanity and maintaining sanity from my first book and that video course. I have plenty of tips on how to communicate, uh, but it's really important that you set a stage that you are a sane person to communicate first. If you're being narcissistically abused, I have different tips that I use to stop the abuse. If you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, I do uh, strategy calls for moms, and you can find my 10 to 8 scheduler below. I have free blogs on my website. I talk about the co-parenting abuse. I label and name it so that it doesn't surprise me. I, I know how to deal with it. I know how to document it. You can know that you're not alone. If you're being abused after you've left your abuser with co-parenting abuse or financial or legal abuse, that's common with a narcissist. It's not personal. They typically all do this to their victims. I have a visual so that you can put this up instead of uh, getting so triggered and destabilized and confused. You can name it that it was control, gaslighting, uh, altering the past or word salad. And I encourage you to um, like and subscribe if you want more videos on my YouTube channel. These are free videos for you, helping you get through it, get over it. You can learn, heal and grow from this and you can come out stronger than before. Thanks for watching. I'm author, award-winning author, Grace Rolston. I'm a mother, a survivor, a life coach, and I, me and my child now thrive. Thank you for watching. I want the best for you. I wish you and your children peace, safety, and 
sanity.